everybody, this is Andrew from TS for Tech, and today I have another computer to take a look at here. This is from a company called Ace Magic or Ace Magician. If you've watched a channel at all, you may have seen I've done a couple other videos with Ace Magician mini PCs. And what's really cool about this one is it's basically a mini PC in a laptop form factor. So they took the same chip, the same interior components as their mini PCs that are in this Intel N95 range and basically turned it into a laptop. So what does that mean? It's a, uh, you know, it's a decent laptop. It's something that you can use for schoolwork, for, you know, work, internet browsing, watching videos, that sort of thing. It's not going to be a super powerful gaming computer or anything like that, even though you may be able to play some Kind of light games or retro games or something like that but it's really not going to be some sort of high performing gaming pc but as an entry-level laptop in a 300 dollar 310 dollar price range you know you're going to get a lot of use out of this you know for normal everyday sort of activities so what i'm going to do unbox this kind of show you the laptop show you what it looks like you know all the different ports and and things like that and like some of the other videos that i've done with these i'll run some benchmarks on it right so maybe a pc benchmark geek bench that sort of thing so you just get an idea of how it will perform but again you know kind of internet browsing microsoft office use school college those sorts of things are probably the sweet spot for this and you know if it can solve those things uh, it's a pretty compelling value in my opinion so we'll go ahead and take a look at this open it up basically packaged like most laptops you'll get from pretty much any manufacturer aside from apple got this little box here and that's pretty simple you just have a wall brick and this is a USB-C connector so it's nice this does take a USB-C uh, input to charge so you don't have to have some kind of weird proprietary barrel jack or anything like that if you have other chargers you can easily charge it without this because it's USB-C so that's pretty cool also have a user manual Also have a user manual, and I don't know if I mentioned the model name earlier, but it is the AX15, probably because this is the 15 inch screen version, 15 inch points, 15 point six inches. Obviously you have some information here. And I mean, it comes nicely packaged. And to be honest, it's actually, <laughs> uh, it's actually pretty nice. Now, a lot of times you get these inexpensive machines and they're all plasticky and kind of not the greatest from a fit and finish perspective, but this actually feels like it's metal, kind of aluminum sort of casing, at least on the outside. Kind of resembles a MacBook, you know, older style MacBook. So actually I'm super impressed in just the fit and finish and just the look of this. Again, I mean, at this price point, if you're talking like 300 bucks, give or take. So that's pretty cool. So it's got some air venting on the bottom, some rubber feet, obviously. Looks like some speaker grills here. Speakers on each side, some contact information, etc. Now, like I said before, this does have Intel Alder Lake N95 chipset in it, a processor, which is a four core, four thread machine. Features up to 3.4 gigahertz um, boost speed. Uh, it does have a max TDP of 15 watts, right? So from that perspective, that's what you're getting has Intel ultra high definition graphics up to 1200 megahertz. This does come with Windows 11 Pro, which is nice. From an overall perspective, I mean, now that I start keep reading these things, it seems like you're getting, I mean, this is actually a pretty good value. Uh, the other thing is this does have like a 180 degree hinge, so you can basically lay it flat. This does have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, uh, which, 
it supports up to 32 gigs, so you can uh, you know add some memory if you would like. This does also have an M2 SSD of 512 gigs, so you know plenty of storage. You can also swap that out if you wanted, and it supports up to a ter two terabyte SSD. Has a 15.6 inch full HD screen. So, I mean, you're not getting any 4K resolution or anything like that. You're gonna get 1920 by 1080. But the bezels are pretty thin, if you can see that. I mean, they're not totally huge on the sides. They're, you know, a little bit, a little bit on the top, you can see, because they do need a microphone hole and the webcam. Now, I think the webcam is a 720p webcam. It says HD, but then I saw somewhere else that it's like one megapixel, so probably not the best from a uh, resolution standpoint, but, but probably good enough for basic zoom use and things like that. As for connectivity here, you have Bluetooth 5.0, Wi-Fi 802.11ac, and some ports we'll look at in a second. Uh, has two built-in speakers, digital microphone, eight hour battery life. Battery is 7.6 volts. 5,000 milliamp hours, and it does support what they're calling fast charging, you know, via the USB-C connector. So if it's empty, you can charge it to full in two and a half hours. Look at the keyboard. It's actually kind of funny. This looks like a speaker grill here, but it's actually all of the all of these, the top portion, it's just like screen printed on there. And the speaker holes are actually just these little ones at the bottom. So it does have you know speakers on each side from the top, but then also the bottom down there, it looks like. But this whole thing here is just screen printed on there, which is actually kind of interesting. <laughs> um, but you have a full-size keyboard. Kind of feels like a MacBook keyboard, you know, not too bad. Uh, just looking at this, the trackpad is pretty big, you know, clicks. Feels pretty smooth. You know, just looking at the keyboard, everything looks okay, I guess. The space bar is a little short. It's a little shifted over. You know, it's not centered on the trackpad. The trackpad itself is not centered on the machine. It's off to the left a little bit. Uh, power button's up here. It's just like a normal keyboard button. It's a little weird here. The, usually the zero is underneath the one, but they have it shifted over a little bit for the arrow key. So what it looks like is they've tried to jam a full-size keyboard into this form factor, so they had to shift a few things around. But, I mean, obviously you'll get used to it if you start using this every day. Uh, the other thing I noticed here does not look like to be any LEDs on the keyboard. So, like, you know, typically you might have a caps lock uh, LED there. I don't see that. But again, this is a basic machine, right? So looking on this side, you do have the USB-C port for power. I'm, I'm assuming you can also use it as a USB-C if it's not plugged in. Looks like a USB 3 port there. You have an HDMI, have another USB-C, and a couple LEDs right there. So it looks like power and charge status or something like that. Then on this side you do have a compact flash card, another USB, another USB, and a headphone jack. Yeah, so the USB ports on there, so you have uh, two USB 3.2 ports, uh, one USB 2 port, uh, one Type-C data port, one Type-A HDMI. Flash card reader can read up to 128 gigabytes or you know use up to 128 gigabyte. Stereo speakers, like I mentioned, those are one and a half watts. And there's two microphones. And I'm curious where the other one is. Because the only microphone I saw is up at the top. It must be hidden somewhere there. And then the adapter is a 19 volt uh, 2.1 amp uh, adapter. So yeah, I mean overall, like this actual laptop, if somebody gave me this and I didn't know and then they asked me to guess how much it cost. Now obviously with the specs, I might, if they told me all the specs on the chip, I might be like, oh yeah, that's kind of like a lower end laptop. But I would guess that this is at least 400, 500 bucks. 400, 450 maybe, I don't know. Now, if I was a college student or something like that, like, I would not be embarrassed to, to carry this around. It looks like a fairly premium laptop. Nice hinge here on the monitor. 
I mean, this is taking some time to boot up, but this is the first time that I started it. Uh, the touchpad is pretty smooth. It does have, you do have to kind of press it hard if you want to do the physical click, but you know, if you just tap it, tap to click, you know, you don't have to do that. So I did uh, just set up a username and password real quick, and obviously it's gonna take a few minutes to, to boot up. What I'm gonna do here is go ahead and boot into the operating system, maybe install some screen recording software, but I will run some tests. I'll show you what those tests are, the test results, like I said, Geekbench, things like that. And then also kind of maybe give you my feedback after using it for a little bit on the tail end of this video. But like overall, like I said, um, you know, fairly nice looking laptop. I mean, there's no fans on right now either. Like I can feel a little warmth on the bottom, but it's not, it's not like running fans and getting all hot. But overall, nice size screen. I mean, it looks nice when I'm looking at it. So my overall first thoughts on this is it looks uh, pretty nice, looks, feels pretty good. So we'll go ahead and, and run some tests and jump over to the, the other part of the video here, show you and talk a little bit more about this. So let's hop over there and continue the review. So the first thing I did here is I did run a uh, Crystal Mark disk check, disk speed check here. So you can see this is what it ended up with, like 500 megabytes per second on the reads and writes. Um, and, you know, kind of overall decent scores, not as high as, you know, I've seen on other machines. But in this class of laptops with this N95 processor, I mean, this is typically the kind of speeds that you'll see. Now here's the uh, the Geekbench CPU scores. So it's got 1205 single score, single core, uh, 2872 uh, for the multi-core. And I'll just let you watch this as I scroll if you want, if you care about any of the actual details of the different performance tests but it didn't score that bad i mean this is comparable to the other mini pcs with the same processor so nothing out of the ordinary i know it's just the laptop format and then the same goes here for the gpu and that's a 3179 open cl score again integrated intel uh, ultra high definition graphics and you can see the the tests that are part of that. So also, you know, standard for this class of chip. And then the last test I did run was a user benchmark test. Um, as you can see, scores low on gaming, kind of like a tree trunk level. But desktop is a speedboat, so you know it's in the it's in the middle of the pack from all the. Uh, the ratings that they have for the machines here. Same thing with Workstation. Workstation really kind of does more like GPU bound type things as well. But as a desktop, if you're not using this as a gaming machine or like really, really deep into doing Workstation type stuff, like I said earlier, this is basically, you know, pretty good for that, right? You can uh, browse the internet, use productivity tools, all that sort of thing and have decent performance and not break the bank, you know, from an overall cost perspective and all of that. So I'm just kind of going to scroll this, I think, when I recorded it. And so the PC status overall, you know, it's as expected in it's performing, you know, like others with the same type of components. Like I said, graphics kind of low, but the boot drive memory processor, etc., is okay, decent, right? Not quite sure why it did have a relative performance uh, insufficient samples, because that is a kind of like an off-brand SSD, so there's not a bunch of others, I guess, that were tested that it can compare against. But we did the Crystal Disk Mark, and you saw those speeds a little bit earlier in the video here. And then just to show you what the, you know, scale is, Tree Trunk is the lowest, right? So 40% is the speedboat kind of in the middle there. So you can see that's that's the scale. It's a good website to go to and, uh, you know, a decent benchmark to run the 
this user benchmark if you're interested in benchmarking your PC. And then on this last piece, I did install OpenOffice. So um, that's an open source office suite sort of thing and was just testing out some of the typing and using the computer just in a you know scenario that you might use it for school or something, right? You're typing in a Word document or an open office document here. And uh, yeah, I'll just let this kind of play a little bit, but not really any issues typing other than what I'm going to say here is like, I'm not used to the key layout, but uh, that's about it. Like I said, uh, key action is pretty good. But, and I did forget to mention this earlier, that does not have keyboard backlighting. So that's one thing also on a cost perspective, they, you know, they kind of reduce the cost by not having backlit keys. So not a huge deal at all for me. Typically, I don't usually even use the key backlights on my, la my Macs and my other machines because I'm not usually typing in the dark. But that might be something that uh, maybe a consideration for you if you're often working in low light situations, something to think about. Hey everybody, this is Andrew from TS for Tech. I was just testing out this laptop. This is the Ace Magic AX15, as I mentioned. Did the unboxing, uh, did some screen recording of the different tests and all of that. And I was just testing out the, the actual webcam performance. And as you can see, this is pretty, um, pretty pixely looking, pretty grainy. This is, uh, I mean, my studio is, I mean, it's not super bright down here. I mean, I have overhead lights, incandescent lights, and you can see, at least on the screen when I'm doing the recording, it is super, super grainy. And um, yeah, I mean, this might be passable for like a Zoom call for kids in school or college or something like that. But, you know, if I was, joining a work call with this, people might be like, hey, what's with your camera? It's, uh, you know, it's kind of grainy. One thing I would, uh, you know, kind of note down here is it's not the highest quality in that respect. Now, I can turn on my side lights here. I have video lights for my overhead shots, and then you'll see it's really blown out then because it doesn't have enough dynamic range or it doesn't have enough ability to stop down uh, to not overexpose. But I'll, I'll turn those on so you can see what those look like. So now, I mean, as you can see, it, it I mean, my face is totally overexposed. The image does clean up a bit on my shirt and kind of like the background. But yeah, no matter how I position this, it is super, overexposed and I can even turn off one of these you know and even this is too bright maybe if you have um, some sort of different front-facing rim light that you could not rim light like ring light or something like that that you can like tone down you might be able to get a little bit of a better uh, video quality here without overexposing it um, let me let me actually try something different and see if that helps. Yeah, no, see, that's... Yeah, I mean, even that, I, I have another little side light here, as you can see. That's as dim as it can be. And it's still, it's still overexposed. So that's that's so that's basically what the quality is of this camera that you get out of here. So let's hop back to whatever else I was doing in this review. So the last part here, I did take the bottom off of the laptop. As you can see, I took all the screws out and then it just kind of pops off. And it is all metal. So bottom is aluminum. And this is what it looks like on the inside, right? So again, the casing is aluminum. There's a speaker there, the battery, the speaker on the other side. 
As you can see, there's the logic board, uh, the M2 SSD. It's kind of a unknown brand I've never seen before. There's one RAM slot. So if you do want to upgrade to 32 gigs, you have to just replace that and then you should be good to go. So like I said, this uh, seems to be a pretty decent laptop for the price. And I was pretty impressed with uh, all the testing and all of that that I did. So I will link to this in the description if you want to check it out. This is Andrew from TS for Tech. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Just me being crazy, I'm lost, yeah I can't